Hey yo, what's poppin', man? It's your boy Bow Easy, man. Check it out right about now. You tuning into Montreality. The only thing that matters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it was um it, it was a special night. <clears throat> that was something that Jermaine was really excited and happy about. Uh, was the fact that me and Chris met for the first time and that and that was what was so unique about that night, you know, and um yeah, man, he was just full of energy. Um, and you could just tell that he was just excited to be a part of the the whole entire event that was taking place. And uh, he sat right, just as this camera is looking dead at me and I'm looking at y'all, he was sitting right across from me, just like this at the dinner table, him, you know what I'm saying, his lovely wife right there. And uh, he was just funny, man, cracking jokes with me. Uh, and then, you know, next the next day we had the show. I remember seeing him, he having a blue bandana. He had on uh, all black. He was on the side of the stage, and then uh, and that was the last time I saw him. You know, so and if you look at the Instagram that Jermaine posted from that from that night, you know, he said something like on the lines of uh, moments like these is um, is real special. You know, Bow and Chris Kelly meet for the first time ever. It's like moments like this. This is what you call like so so deaf so. Um, and you know, I just got to take my hat off to him before I want to make sure this piece makes the whole interview this, especially this because um, If it wasn't for guys like you know, Chris and Chris Chris Cross then you know, it probably wouldn't be no bow wow, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like I always like I always love to salute the ones that paved the way uh, For me and you don't see a lot of young cats in the game doing that no more You know, I paved the way for a lot of cats a lot of young cats You know what I'm saying? But you know, a lot of them, you know, have pride, which is cool, whatever. But for me, man, I recognize it was real. If it wasn't for cats like Criss Cross, then it wouldn't be no bow. It wouldn't be none of this. You know what I'm saying? It, would, it, it, it just wouldn't be. Yeah, I went to school up until like, um, like the seventh grade. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, like probably like right up, like in the seventh grade, and that's when like when everything just popped off for me. I ended up moving to Atlanta, meeting up with Jermaine Dupree, and then uh, you know that's when all the the history was uh, bound to be made. Mm -hmm. If I was to have a nine to five job, realistically, uh, probably see myself, I guess like when I was a teenager, I guess before the fame and everything, probably somewhere working at the mall or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Being that I always love shoes and sneakers, I could see myself probably trying to work out for a locker to see if I can get, you know, hooked up with that, uh, that Saturday special when them Jordans come out, <laughs> that'll be the only reason. Uh, that'll probably be like the one job I do. I couldn't see myself working in a grocery store, or, uh, nowhere else. I just think that the mall is just like the perfect spot for a teenager to work at. Everything that a teenager would want or dream of is inside the mall. Whether it's clothes, whether it's you know whatever it is that you went to, you can find it at the mall. Video games, probably work at GameStop or something like that. Oh, wait, my favorite video game of all time. Ah, oh, man, I can't just pick one. I gotta pick a couple of them. I'm a real video gamer. So all the 2K series, most definitely. Uh, all the Madden series, most definitely. Smooth Criminal, Sega Genesis was like one of the coldest games. I love that game. Um, Stairs will fall down and then Michael Jackson will walk up there and moonwalk on the pool table and all that. Yeah, that was dope. Of course, Mortal Kombat, I gotta throw out of Mortal Kombat. And I never was like a big Tekken fan, but Mortal Kombat was it. And, uh, oh yeah, the Home Alone video game, too. That was real dope. And the Ninja Turtle video game. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the first thing that I bought once I got on was a car. I think a whole bunch of people can vouch for that. Uh, when they receive that first big check, especially, you know, if, if you're the type that, you know, you came from, from actually nothing and you always, even as a kid, you always just dreamed of having the better things in life. You know, that's the first thing that people want is a brand new car. That's just the status. It just goes along with, you know, just everything that you represent. But for me, that was the number one thing was a whip. I had to get a new car. I wanted a car. That was it. It was a Maserati, actually. Right when I did Johnson Family Vacation with Cedric the Entertainer, uh, I, I, I fell in love with the Maserati and I put it in one of my videos with me and Baby back in the day. Like back in like 06, the Let's Get Down video. And then I just loved it. And I just bought that. And from that, I upgraded. You know what I mean? Got a Ferrari from then. Traded in that. Got another Ferrari. Then traded that in. And got it. You know? And the story goes on and on. You know, just living too early. Living too fast. You know? Well, for me, I think it's good because I'm still young. And I started out young. So, for me, I got all that out the way. 
It ain't a car I ain't own, it ain't a car I ain't drive. So for me, nothing really impresses me. The only thing that impresses me or excites me is the work. That's what gives me the adrenaline rush. You know, I don't care about a Maybach. I had one of them at 21. My mama bought me one. So it's like none of that stuff really impressed me anymore. And that's, and I think that's what's bringing the best out of me as a man, as a person, as an artist, out of an actor, everything is the fact that those things don't define me nor make me. And I'm cool how I am. You see me, I'm in a hoodie. I mean, don't get it, don't get it twisted. I got the rollie on, but I mean, other than that, we cooling. No, 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 we we chilling. The keys to success is just staying humble, staying hungry, um, and and to love what you do. You gotta love what you do. If you don't love what you do, then why are you doing it? You know. And I think that if you do that and respect the craft or respect whatever it is that you want to do in life or whatever your surroundings are, just take it serious and just go hard at it. Um, I know this is really bad and I encourage all kids to read, uh, as for my daughter as well. I mean, reading is very important, boo-boo, so I hope she doesn't like rewind this. But um, I was just telling like all my partners how reading for me is so relaxing that it actually makes me go to sleep. Like I don't mind reading, but every time I seem to read anything, it, it can even be a movie script. I was just telling my agent this the other day. You know, I love, I don't mind reading, but for some reason it relaxes me so much that I really go to sleep. I Googled that shit and like said, like, can reading make you go to sleep? And that's what it said. It said like, if you're in a relaxed state of mind, or you in a peaceful, you know, surrounding, if your surroundings are very peaceful, and if you start reading, it can relax the brain and you can doze off. It's almost like being hypnotized. Just like your eyes gazing across the words in the paper and reading the different letters and, and taking everything in, it, it can relax the brain and you can fall asleep. So I got that problem really bad. So yeah, I don't think I should. I don't, I don't do a lot of reading as much as I should, but I encourage all the kids out there, make sure you pick up a book. If I was to write a book, what would I call my book? Just the Shaw Moss story, you know? If it's my story, then why not give them the real? Give them the reals, giving them who Shad Moss is. And and what I stand for and what I represent, that's what the name of my book will be called. Yes, most definitely. Um, I'm partnering up with my with my big uncle, my big homie Snoop, on that project. That's going to be out uh, probably like later on in the year, if not um, the first quarter of next year. And we're putting that together now. He just was on 106 and Park with me not too long ago. And after the show, we was talking briefly about it. And um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's taking its courses, but it's definitely going to happen. So definitely look forward to that. And the guys who did the Reincarnated uh, movie are going to be actually doing this along with Snoop. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I can't wait. And I just think that it's time. Uh, you know, it hasn't been a young cat in the game who's been able to tell a story from when he was still young. And that's what's so special and unique about myself. So I just want to share that with the world and give my fans something to, to watch and relive and, you know, be a part of the history you know, that, that, I, that I believe that I, I've created um, along my path. And I'm still young and I still got a long way to go. So I'm just starting. So everything that I did early on in my career, like I said, it was big, it was huge. But now it's just all about taking over every aspect of the game, especially when it comes to the entertainment industry. Yeah, um, where I'm at with the album really right now, I'm not even really focused on the album at this moment. You know what I'm saying? For me, it's all about um, finding the right records. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going into single mode. I just <clears throat> hit Birdman the other day and told him that I'm ready. I'm going to run with this record I got out called Pussy On My Mind. Uh, it's a song featuring, my, uh, we're featuring Kid Ink. Uh, and what I like, what I'd like to do was the last time I put out the, the Green Light Five, I put it out, and I wanted the fans to pick and grab a hold of one record, and whatever record that was, that's the one I was gonna roll with because I do it for my people, my fans. And being that that record just took off virally, it was like, why not run with it? It's a home run hit. So when I come back from England, I'm actually gonna shoot the video for that, and I'm gonna shoot the video to Heart Stop as well. So I'm just back on my grind and getting back into that, you know, into bow mode. I, which was, was, was really taking me so long is the fact that I wanted to live life and I really wanted to get inspired again by things that I see. Um, you know, everybody can rap about money, everybody can rap about cars and jewelry and all that. That's cool, but, you know, by doing the Green Light series, I've touched so many people with the real shit that I got just by me living my life and going through real life things. And um, for that, you know, now I feel like now I'm time. Now it's time to get back in the studio and do what I got to do because I got so much stuff on my mind and on my brain and that I want to share with the people and just share with the world. It's only right. So now I'm getting into that mode.
and I'm redoing the whole album. Like I got a whole bunch of records already done and recorded. I got records with Wiz. I got records with Meek. I got I got records with um, with everybody. But it's like you know that shit was old. Like I was you know it's old music. So to me, to my ears, it's new if I release all of the music. But I'm just you know I'm scratching all of those and I'm going back in and redoing the whole entire project. I would love to work with DMX. Hell yeah. <laughs> Why not? I think, I mean, DMX is a legend. You know, you can't take away the man's craft. And with that being said, you know, I, I have the utmost respect for DMX. Um, you know, man, I, I believe he's definitely, if people don't want to put him top five, I would put X in my top five. But he's definitely in the top ten category, no doubt. Um, just well respected man outside of you know for me it's about the talent it's about his gift it's about what he was blessed with and he was blessed with a gift he was similar to a Tupac in a way by how his music touched so many people and he was like a poet you know I mean, he was a rare breed so for that I salute DMX and um you know I, I speak on behalf of the world everybody want him to get better and get back in tip top shape but X gonna be X and you know I got the utmost respect for that man mm -hmm. big fan big fan of DMX yeah I met Michael Jordan um, I remember the first time I met him it was it was actually years ago but I'm actually real cool with his with his sons uh, Marcus and, and Jeffrey <clears throat> and uh, we, I, I want I wouldn't say like yeah I would say we kind of grew up together I remember just being on tour and you know every time we come to Chicago even like at the age of maybe like 15 you know they would come around and we would just we just click and there's been times I stayed over um, Marcus and you know the family Mr. Jordan's house and went over there and played ball we would get in we would get in town for the tours and like early we'll go over their house hoop so yeah of course I had plenty of times actually a funny story I actually wore some irises over to their house and we was getting ready to play ball and I remember Mr. Jordan came in and woke us all up and was like, uh, who's is these? <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. You know, I loved AI. You know, AI was my dude. Like, Iverson was my dude. But, you know, everything was brand Jordan out. I was like, the mind. He's like, man, you know these ain't, you know, come on, man. <laughs> you know you got to have on some jump, some jump, man, some Jordans, something. And um, I never saw my AIs after that moment. <laughs> I was in some Jordans going downstairs to play basketball. What is in Bow's pocket um, at the time of the interview right now? Absolutely nothing because I just came fresh off the plane through the airport. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't have anything on me that would get me in any type of trouble whatsoever. So, with that being, only thing I have on me is my wallet. I got my wallet on me though. My house key. That's my house key, the, the red key right there. That's that new shit. Oh, I get, I get to pick my. Hold on, so you saw I get three different meals. I get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, damn. Okay, for breakfast I'm gonna go with a. Uh, for breakfast I'm gonna go with some fresh toast, um, some potatoes, and some turkey sausage. For lunch I gotta have me a turkey burger, and some French fries. And if it's my last meal, I gotta get a vanilla shake. Now, if it's my dinner, I need some fried catfish, you know, I need some macaroni and cheese, and I need some mashed potatoes. I need that. I need that. So, if I got that, I'll be fine. If I got all, if I got all those things, I'll be okay. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> That's a tough-ass question. <laughs> that was too, like, that was like, that was like oh, a yeah. school. Yeah, that flew right over my head, dog. That shit went, shoo. Yeah. <laughs> Who's my hero? Probably my mother. My mother, my mother. Cause you know, that's my hero. To watch a single parent mother, you know, <clears throat> do it all on her own and, and, and now be in the position that she's in, I just gotta respect that. You know, that's what I wanna be. I wanna get to that point where I kick my feet up and I do nothing. I'm working for two people. My daughter and my mother. So, but I see my mother actually do it. 
I'm preparing my daughter to walk through that step, through that, you know, that, that face of life. But my mom's most definitely, man, off top, you know, black woman, no father around, just my mom's raising the young boy. And just so happens that I got, I got a blessing from God to be able to do what I do, to be here right now talking to y'all. So definitely my mom's. My message to the youth is to always remain positive, humble, think before you do. Set a goal, go for it. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't because you always can. And just work hard, work hard. Dedicate yourself to your craft, whatever it is that you want to do in life, and go for it. Why not? You only got one shot, one life to live. Go hard. Bow Wow's a different situation because I got him when he's so young. So really me and Bow Wow, Bow Wow's like my son. You know, actually, if I ever had a kid, you would thought that would be Bow Wow. Um, so.